Look at that shine, man. Oh, that's some beautiful, very bright. 99.99 fine treasure. And that's just the stripped stuff. What? How many days has it even been since I wore these? Only a couple. I saw Mr. Spider in there somewhere. Ah, there he is. You creepy little sucker. <laughs> oh my gosh. Freaky. Always tap your boots out, folks. You guys like my doorstop four and a half pounds of solid pure copper <laughs> so you might have heard this talk about how uh, you cut your hair or trim it or brush it out and you know some of it comes out uh, the idea is that you don't want to be just throwing that in the trash um, I mean, it's kind of rooted in the idea that all of the products or uh, waste products of the human body are supposed to be like sacred, um, you know, sacred refined forms of something. Like our body's done a bunch of transmuting. You know, I got this hairball off my comb. It's a well-known fact that like, you know, some of your hair is like used in voodoo to do voodoo against you could be I don't know too much about all that but uh, you know we're talking here about like the subtle energies and electromagnetism as applied to the body and you know the electrochemical processes of the body so I just think all that stuff's really interesting and I think you know at the very least there's probably all kinds of goodies in this that my tomatoes might like. So, giving it to them. Those are an experiment. I love them. And I just hope they love me back for everything that I do to them. They're completely different types, so I'm not like running a control. That's what I wanted to do. It's just the two of the same kind and run a control, but I didn't end up doing that. So, you know, whatever. And you know, that's the thing about the magnetism and the heart based sciences it's like the whole point is you have to get out of that duality of thinking that you need a study and a control and it's got to all be this logical perfectly provable i can articulate every little thing it's like no you know even if you do go to all the effort of making something perfectly provable a lot of people are still going to call it bullshit they're not even going to look at it they're going to find some reason to debunk you by some other way you know ad hominem try to ruin your credibility or question your background and this or that or whatever it could just be completely innocent stuff in your background like you were part of a church or you went to a university and oh no nah, you're a liar you're full of it not even gonna look at that so the way I look at it is it's like why bother why bother with that super left brain logical binary dualistic egoic desire to prove something out with beyond a shadow of a doubt like I don't think you're ever gonna get there if that's where you want to stay I think the whole point is we got to be our own scientists you know or at least practice the scientific method you know testing to see if things can be repeated just because somebody else can't repeat something that I can do doesn't mean it's not real. That's the problem. People have got stuck in this rut about that. Like, nah, man, if my body voltage and my body chemistry is like super different because I've been working on it for a long time, I'm going to be able to do stuff that you're going to have a really hard time figuring out or repeating quickly. 
you know? So it's not as simple as can everybody repeat it? Okay, it's true. No, <laughs> we're all a little different in our chemistries, in our vibrations, in our voltages, in our potentials. Uh, and from what I can tell by my experience is we're pretty much unlimited. And the only limitation is that shit we get in our heads about needing to prove stuff to other people and caring what other people think and like, well, the whole scientific method uh, problems that I just talked about, you know. Yo, check this out, you guys. Ooh. Oh yeah. Please. Phone's gonna overheat if I'm not careful here. It's pure copper. All right, let's give this a shot. Let's think about cybernetics. It's the idea that all technology is an extension of the human body. It's all an extrapolation of the body. So building off of uh, prior videos, as you can see, we got our negative terminal and our positive terminal on our DC electrical system that we have in cars. You know, so hook up your positive, your red, and your black, negative. And uh, basically once you patch those in, you complete the circuit and uh, the negative terminal sends the voltage out of the battery and into the system. And the positive terminal pulls it back in. So it's making a circuit, right? But if you've ever uh, had your car die on you or a battery die on you, you know that when the battery runs out of juice, the car stops, right? The body stops. So what we have to, um, to deal with that is called the alternator, right? Uh, the, the wording on that is symbolic of the alternating current concepts, but basically um, down here with the motor, right? With the motor is basically analogous to the human gut, right? It's uh, burning and churning, right? Processing the fuel that the, that the motor drinks, right? In this case, gasoline, but it drinks it, uses it, transmutes it, and in the process of doing that, it's also running this alternator, which is generating more current, new electricity, um, that then gets sent into the battery, <clears throat> keeps the battery charged up so that the DC electrical system can keep working. And, uh, you know, I'm telling you, the cybernetics thing, it, it's really true. You can find analogies in all of this, I mean, you look at your car, there's a face, right? Here on, uh, you know, these types of vehicles is the mouth, right? Um, you could also call the carburetor, maybe, the mouth, or perhaps the stomach, and then the engine is the gut, and the alternator is the heart, and the battery is the muscle, and and uh, you know, come around over here and uh, check it out. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's the cybernetic perspective in a nutshell. It's that uh, all of these technological devices can be understood as extensions of the human body. Um, you can understand what something is by understanding what something does. And um, that's, that's just the way it works, you know? Um, people that work with electricity know this because uh, they're just, we're interfacing with this uh, fact on a daily basis in our jobs. Um, you know, people who are into mechanics are, uh, you know, tend to think this way as well, maybe less so. Uh, if they're not also uh, developing an understanding of electricity, but 
um, you know, and then chemistry, chemistry plays into all of that too. And it, and it all, you know, it all works together to create the thing, to create the, the life, the motion, the energy, you know, the horsepower. So, um, you know, I think it's pretty obvious that the electricity is the basis of all of it. Um, you know, that truck won't start if it doesn't have juice in the battery. It won't. Sure, it won't start if it doesn't have air or fuel either. But spark, you know, is the main thing and also the most difficult thing to sort out if it's not working. So um, to me, it's just perfectly analogous to the human body. That if you don't got spark, it doesn't matter how much air you put in it or how much, you know, fuel you put in it. It's not going to run. So it's that spark that underlies the entire rest of the process of the, the, the construction of the thing, the, the chemistry of the thing, the circuitry of the thing. Um, it has to have the spark or it has no life. And it's true with cars, you know? Uh, any of you who have done rebuilds or you've worked on like distributors and the distributor isn't working and and you're not getting strong spark and you start going through the coils and the relays and the contacts and the wires and and you figure out your distributor is the problem is is that it's you know putting the block at 180 degrees out of uh alignment you know it's like you'll never get the thing started if it's out of if it is 180 degrees out of alignment and you don't know that but there is something interesting in that because if you figure out that it's 180 degrees out of alignment, you can make it work if you just rearrange the wires on the distributor properly so that it now uh, doesn't care about being 180 degrees out, right? Or you could just do it up right so that the next guy that has to work on it, or you, when it's years down the road and you fucking forgot that it was 180 degrees out, now you can't figure out why it won't work. The correct, maybe proper, loving caring thing to do would be to put that distributor back in alignment and then go forward because now you've you've fixed that for anybody and everybody that has to dig in there again you're right so you're kind of paying it forward food for thought check that out huh That's what I call a man-sized lazy daisy. You guys know what a lazy daisy is? It's a uh, not entirely necessary tool for doing so-called Viking knit weaves. And uh, as you may have already noticed, I'm wearing a lot of pure copper today. You know, it's supposed to be good for you, as long as it's pure or not mixed with dirty metals, which is something I've spoken about in the past in some of my other earlier videos about treasure hunting metals. But, uh, yeah, this is kind of what it's all about. Probably the biggest holdup with my whole, um, metalworking project is, uh, has been symbolism. Like, I know what I want the product to be made out of. I know why I want it to be made out of that. Um, but the thing that's been holding me back is that people love pictures, and symbols, and, you know, talismans, and little esoteric meanings to be woven into the stuff that they, you know, buy and wear and uh, put on display. Like, if it's just, you know, this kind of basic, rustic, knobby look, that's kind of an acquired taste. It's my preference for sure, but not everybody's gonna feel that way. And um, 
why go to the effort of making a whole bunch of this stuff if people aren't going to really like it and enjoy it and so anyway long story short is i had to make sure that i understood symbolism correctly before just going and um you know carving graven images and stone so to speak uh and you know potentially accidentally making talismans that are in opposition to my intention uh i've said it before i don't know where but many times that like you should never wear symbols that you don't understand you should never brandish symbols that you don't understand like because they have meanings and you know, to a certain extent, you can make your own meaning to things, but down deep in the coding of reality, things have their meanings. And, you know, if you don't know their meanings and you're brandishing them and wearing them, they're going to attract people that do know their meanings or know some of their mean meanings or some of their potential meanings. And, um... You gotta be careful with that, you know? Like, uh, have you ever gone out and just been kind of flabbergasted thinking like, why do the fucking creeps in this place think I want anything to do with them? Why are they trying to talk to me? Like, I feel like everything about me is trying to push them away and, and keep them at bay. Like, I'm, I'm pretty obviously, you know, not into that. Like, I'm a bright and shining light, right? Well, sometimes um, it takes learning the hard way. Sometimes you just may be brandishing a simple talisman that you don't understand, but is a focus point for people you may not want to be interacting with, right? They're looking at the subtleties and they're picking up on these things and they're going, oh, that symbol, you know, usually, to my knowledge, means this. So maybe that person's into this too. And then they come kind of start creeping on you and you're like, dude, fuck off, man. I don't need your weird vibes. Um, I've fallen victim to this previously. And that's how I learned about this, you know. Um. I was always careful about symbols. I have zero tattoos because I have no freaking idea what I would even want tattooed on me. Like, I take symbolic meaning very seriously. And, and even still, I still blundered and accidentally wore a symbol that I didn't understand. And I could not understand why fucking weirdos wouldn't leave me alone. And, uh... I mean, part of it is weirdos like to loosh off of your light, you know, your high vibrations and stuff. But it gets a little more specific and weird and creepy when you start introducing symbolisms into your um, projection, your personal projection, your display of yourself. So just be careful with that, you know. This right here, that's an S, which stands for snake, which is also a S sine wave or a scalar wave or sin um, it's electricity it's a symbol of electricity you know so I've I'm obviously super into electricity I've struggled for a long time with my deep connection with snake symbolism and the general consensus that it's all evil I'm like oh, man it's just it's just waves so anyway, I know that even though I'm being extremely careful, there are going to be people who think that, oh my gosh, he's making satanic symbolism in his art. And it's like, well, you know, read it that way if you want. But uh, if you read it that way, that actually tells me something about your psychology. <laughs> uh, and that's really how this all works. You can tell so much about what's going on in someone's head based on the symbols they wear the um, colors they're interested in, the uh, books they're interested in, the concepts, like, it's really not that hard to read minds. 
obviously it's not a totalized thing. You can't read every little nook and cranny of someone's brain, but that's not the point. The point is abstraction and extrapolation and triangulation, figuring out what someone's got going on up here. It's really not that hard, really not. I mean, honestly, once you know how, it makes you feel weird because, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like people are, uh, T it's TMI all the time, you know, with pe what people are displaying. It's like, bro, uh, you know, TMI, maybe a little more privacy. Like, this is too weird. You're giving me way too much of a read on you. And that's just tricky business. But, uh, you know, can be made into a uh, little purdy. I don't know how purdy these are because they're, like I said, that rustic look. Just kind of simply made. But then, you know, you got this stuff. Yeah, that's treasure, man. Oh, that's what the lazy daisy is good for. That's uh, how it looks before you pull it through a series of holes in a draw plate and finish it up. Just trying to bust some out while I'm motivated about it. Give them away on my travels. Now, does anyone want to tell me why my favorite symbol can most easily be found on ship tickets? I don't like that. Is it because our secretions, our sacred uh, fluids, contain the seed of life? So that's made for wiping it off and throwing it away? I don't know. There's a lot of research going on out there about these sacred secretions, so I'm going to make a video about that here soon. And there's the finished product. Kind of chunky. Actually need to edit it just a little bit so it has a better fit on me da's wrist. Just shorten it up a little bit. But I'm gonna do that later because I'm tired of this.